Hello, I'm Matthias Anderson. This video is going to teach you how you can do the best job of capturing sound for your online teaching lessons. But we're already partway through our series, so feel free to either start at the beginning or just take what you will from this episode. So let me lead with the most important thing. Let's replay that, but with the sound this time, eh? The sound you capture is more important than your video. It really makes the point, doesn't it? Now that said, please don't come away from this thinking that your video is unimportant because it is also very important, just not quite as important as your sound. And you'd be silly not to pay attention to both, right? The guideline you should remember is that clear audio is more important than good video. So it's generally better to invest in improving your sound capture than making things look perfect. Okay, so let's tackle that audio side. Let me demonstrate something. Clear audio is more important than good video. See, isn't this much harder to hear than before? This is the audio coming from my camera's built-in microphone. It's actually a great camera, but capturing audio with it is terrible. Instead, I use a lavalier or lapel microphone like this one here. I normally hide this under my shirt and it still sounds fine, but I've left it visible today to make the point that it's really not a big deal to do so. It looks fine, and clear audio is more important than good video, right? But if I'm interviewing someone, I can't always mic them up in advance. So listen to how this handheld mic sounds. But don't worry too much about buying any mic like mine, because I'm only using these to illustrate the ideas for now, and your situation may well be different. And this handheld mic is the easiest way to demonstrate a very important point about capturing audio. Distance matters a ton. When the mic is up close to my mouth, the sound it captures is much clearer than when it is far away, right? Now, too close can also be bad, though, and captures some bad sounds like lip smacking, and plosives, like in Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. But when the mic is far away from your mouth, that's the easiest way to get really bad audio. Remember this mic built into the camera? So why is this audio so bad? Well, capturing sound is all about the ratios. Actually, it's one particular ratio, the signal to noise ratio, or SNR. The signal is the sound you want to capture, like my voice right now. The noise is all the other sound, the stuff you don't want to capture, like the cars on that road out there, or some device humming like that light, or someone else talking around you. But imagine that situation with other people talking. I'm sure you've had that happen to you before, right? What do you do if you're having a conversation in a busy room and someone is having a hard time hearing you? Well, of course, one option is to get louder, right? If you get louder than all of the other noise, your audience can hear your voice. And this is something that you can apply to your own online teaching. Well, I don't mean that you should actually yell your lessons, but whispering or speaking too quietly will make it much harder for your microphone to pick up your voice. And speaking with a full voice does tie into the other things that we've discussed in other episodes of needing to make sure that you speak with enough energy to engage your students with what you're teaching. But there's another thing that you instinctively do to be heard in that busy room too. You stand closer together. Even if you yell as loudly as you can, your audience will never hear you from the other side of town. That's clearly too far. And even being on the other side of that busy room will make it impossible for them to hear you. You need to get right up close to the listener. In fact, you might sometimes even put your mouth right up to their ear and cup your hand. Then, even your whispers can be heard above the noise. And this is the exact same concept with microphones, of course. That's why I put my mic this close to my mouth. And you should try to do the same. The microphone doesn't need to be expensive or fancy. It mostly just needs to be close to your mouth. And one of the best ways to do that is to buy an inexpensive wired microphone that you can clip onto your shirt, like this. You can plug some of those lavalier or lapel microphones directly into your camera, and some of them record audio on your smartphone. Well, that's if you're shooting video and the student will see your face, I mean. If you're only recording audio over slides or something, then don't even bother with a clip-on mic. I use this one here that plugs straight into my computer. Uh, but several of us at A Cloud Guru recorded our first courses on microphones that cost us like less than $50. I still have mine here. Just put your face up close to whatever you're using. Close, but not too close, remember? 
and you can figure out what is too close by recording yourself and listening. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And while you're listening, you should also make sure that you're not getting bad echo. Now, if you've got your mouth close enough to the microphone and aren't right up by a wall, then the echo might not be a problem for you at all because echo noise is effectively many times farther away from the mic than your voice signal. But if you do hear echo, you can try putting up soft things like blankets or sweaters on all of your walls, the things around you. Anyway, an advantage of plugging your mic directly into the computer or camera recording the display component of your lesson is that recording the audio and the video together makes things much easier to edit because they're synchronized. Have you seen any behind the scenes stuff about making movies? Often in those, you'll see the clapperboards that they use to mark the beginning of each take. But they don't just film those clapperboards either. They also speak the information from them and clap them together. That clap is what lets editors sync up the audio track with the video. If they aren't synchronized, then it feels really wrong, doesn't it? Like this. It sounds terrible. It's very strange. The brain just doesn't know what to do. So if you are recording your audio and video separately, always start both of them recording and then clap your hands together. Remember to make sure that you're in frame of the camera or it won't help. Then when you're editing, match up the video frame where your hands meet with the bump in the audio waveform for the clap. And don't worry if you're not totally sure what I mean just yet, it'll make much more sense to you when you try it out for the first time. Now, another thing I should mention about microphones before we move on is the gain. Gain is the sensitivity of the microphone, kind of like the volume, but for the recording side. If the mic gain is set too low, then it won't hear anything, like a hearing aid that's run out of batteries or been turned off. And if you try to amplify a very low gain signal, it's like trying to zoom in and count the hairs on someone's head in a picture that you snapped with your phone from outer space. Okay, so that example may not be something that you or I have ever experienced personally, but hopefully you can imagine it and remember that this just won't work. If you try to do this with your sound, it'll sound distorted and possibly very noisy too. But the opposite end of the spectrum is just as bad. When the gain is set too high, the sound waves get clipped and what you've recorded sounds terrible. It might be possible to make out what you've said, but it'll still really strain your students' ears at best. And at worst, it'll be completely unusable. So you need to set your gain just right. Imagine Goldilocks coming over to your place and setting up your microphone for you. And what she would do is to go into your microphone's test mode where she can see the sound level that it's registering. Then have you talk as loudly as you should when you're recording and then make sure that the mic signal bounces up high but never goes red or hits the very maximum possible. That's it. And actually, you don't even need Goldilocks's help. I'm sure you could do that yourself. Finally, I want to touch briefly on noise reduction. In software, I mean. Here's the thing. It definitely is possible to apply some noise reduction to your audio signal during your editing stage. And it can sometimes help, actually. But there's no question that it will not sound nearly as good as it would have if you had eliminated the noise at the recording stage instead. It's kind of like dropping a piece of bread in the mud. Sure, you could try to clean it off and get most of the dirt out or wash it with water and deal with it being a bit soggy, but wouldn't you rather just have kept the thing clean instead? Benjamin Franklin may not have been talking about recording videos for the internet when he said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but it definitely applies here. Okay, so that was audio, but now let's also look at video. Get it? Look at video? Okay, I'm sorry. But this episode has already covered enough stuff, so it's a good place to break off and let you digest it. Think about your own situation. What microphone options do you have available to you? Which one would be the least hassle for you to use? And which one can get closest to your mouth when you're recording? And if you tried them out, which one sounds best to your ear? And especially when you adjust both the gain and where your mouth is. I hope this helps you to record better audio for your online teaching. And if you have any more tips you think could help other people out, please do leave us a comment about it. Stay safe and keep being awesome.